Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. through your word reconciled the human race to yourself in a wonderful way. Grant, we pray, that with prompt devotion and eager faith the Christian people may hasten toward the solemn celebrations to come. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Samuel. The Lord said to Samuel, Fill your horn with oil and be on your way. I'm sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem for I have chosen my king from among his sons. As Jesse and his sons came to the sacrifice, Samuel looked at Eliab and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed is here before him. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not judge from his appearance or from his lofty stature, because I have rejected him. Not as man sees does God see, because man sees the appearance, but the Lord looks into the heart. In the same way, Jesse presented seven sons before Samuel, but Samuel said to Jesse, the Lord has, chosen, has not chosen any of these. Then Samuel asked Jesse, are these all the sons you have? Jesse replied, There is still the youngest who is tending the sheep. 
Samuel said to Jesse, send for him. We will not begin the sacrificial banquet until he arrives here. Jesse sent and had the young man brought to them. He was ready, a young, handsome, a youth handsome to behold and making a splendid appearance. The Lord said, there anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel, with the horn of oil in hand, anointed David in the presence of his brothers. And from that day on, the Spirit of the Lord rushed upon David. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light, for light produces every kind of goodness and righteousness and truth. Try to learn what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the fruitless works of darkness, rather expose them. For it is shameful even to mention the things done by them in secret. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible. For everything that becomes visible is light. Therefore it says, Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead and Christ will give you light. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. As Jesus passed by, he saw a blind man from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither he nor his parents sinned. It is so that the works of God might be made visible through him. We have to do the works of the one who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had said this, he spat on the ground and made clay with the saliva and smeared the clay on his, he on his eyes and said to him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which means scent. So he went and washed and came back able to see. His neighbors and those who had seen him earlier as a beggar said, Isn't this the one who used to sit and beg? Some said, It is. But others said, No, he just looks like him. He said, I am. So they said to him, How were your eyes opened? He replied, The man called Jesus made clay and anointed my eyes and told me, Go to Siloam and wash. So I went there and washed and was able to see. And they said to him, Where is he? He said, I don't know. They brought the one who was once blind to the Pharisees. Now Jesus had made clay and opened his eyes on a Sabbath. So then the Pharisees also asked him how he was able to see. He said to them, He put clay on my eyes, and I washed, and now I can see. So some of the Pharisees said, This man is not from God, because he does not keep the Sabbath. But others said, How can a sinful man do such signs? And there was a division among them. So they said to the blind man again, what do you have to say about him since he opened your eyes? He said, He is a prophet. Now the Jews did not believe that he had been born, that he had been blind and gained his sight, until they summoned the parents of the one who had gained his sight. They asked them, Is this your son who you say was born blind? How does he now see? His parents answered and said, we know that this is our son, and that he was born blind. We do not know how he sees now, nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him, he is of age. He can speak for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jews, for the Jews had already agreed that if anyone acknowledged him as the Christ, he would be expelled from the synagogue for this reason his parents said, He is of age, question him. So a second time they called the man who had been blind and said to him, Give God the praise. We know that this man is a sinner. He replied, If he is a sinner, I do not know. One thing I do know is that I was blind and now I see. So they said to him, What did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered them, I told you already and you do not listen. Why do you not want to hear it again? Why do you want to hear it again? Do you want to become his disciples too? They ridiculed him and said, You are that man's disciple. We are disciples of Moses. We know that God spoke to Moses, but we do not know where this one is from. The man answered and said to them, This is what is so amazing, that you do not know where he is from, yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but if one is devout and does his will, he listens to him. It is unheard of that anyone ever opened the eyes of a person born blind. If this man were not from God, he would not be able to do anything. They answered and said to him, You were born totally in sin, and are you trying to teach us? 
Then they went, threw him out. When Jesus heard that, he, that they had thrown him out, he found him and said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered and said, Who is he, sir, that I may believe in him? Jesus said to him, You have seen him, and the one speaking with you is he. He said, I do believe, Lord, and he worshipped him. Then Jesus said, I came into this world for judgment, so that those who do not see might see, and those who do see might become blind. Some of the Pharisees who were with him heard this and said to him, Surely we are not also blind, are we? Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would have no sin. But now you are saying, We see, so your sin remains. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today's Gospel, we hear about a man who was born blind and now sees, who now sees through Jesus Christ. Obviously, the, the fathers of the church see each one of us in this man, that humanity was born blind, St. Augustine, for example. In order to see as we should, we need Jesus Christ. Perhaps we can say our modern world has developed a particular form of blindness. We have microscopes that can see the smallest thing imaginable, we have telescopes that can, that can go off and, and view distant galaxies. But often we do not see that which is closest to us. It is easy in the busyness of ordinary life to forget to look. We often hear Jesus say, you who have ears ought to hear, but perhaps today, we could hear it said, we who have eyes ought to see. Today's Gospel reading presents us with two types of blindness, physical and spiritual. The one who suffers from spiritual blindness cannot see God working. For as in our first reading from Samuel, we hear, not as man sees does God see, but man, because man sees the appearance. So we have a, a parallel. On the one hand, we have a man who is physically blind, recovering his sight. And on the other hand, we have the Pharisees who could see physically, descended deeper and deeper into a spiritual blindness. Their hearts were hardened because they were blinded by pride. And the spiritual blindness kept them from seeing what was right in front of their faces. Jesus Christ is God. For us today in 2020, in spite of the difficult situation that we find ourselves in, currently going through a stay-at-home ordinance in order to mitigate the onset of contagion, which painfully means being deprived of Holy Mass, of Holy Communion, we should not succumb to frustration or, or despair However, we, we should see in this trial the divine hand of God. With humility and hope, we may see it as an a moment of abundant grace, one that our Father in His divine providence has prepared for us. There are many things that we will take away from this experience, to be sure whether it be the shock value of stopping us in our tracks 
in order to evaluate what is most important and never taking for granted the gifts that God gives us. Or perhaps it could be families who are being invited to literally experience what it means to be the domestic church and so gather on the day of the Lord in prayer and in celebration of, of, God's, of God's dominion, of His, of His goodness to worship Him in the home. Today's readings, however, in particular the Gospel, invite us to zero in on our baptismal character, that is, our identity as an adopted son of God who has become a partaker of the divine nature, a member of Christ and co-heir with him, and a temple of the Holy Spirit, which is something incredible, something that should stop us in our tracks to reflect upon and be reminded of. Through baptism, being washed with the waters of divine grace, He becomes present within us. And the only thing that can separate us from this presence of God in our souls is mortal sin, which, as the Catechism states, destroys charity in the heart of man by a grave violation of God's law it turns man away from God, who is his ultimate end and his beatitude, by preferring freely an inferior good to him. Therefore, regardless of the current state of affairs where we are separated, as it were, from God's Eucharistic presence, when in the state of grace God dwells within, so adore him there. We must remember, or we can remember, that we are temples of the Holy Spirit. How do we adore him in my baptized soul? How can I seek to enter his temple within me? Well, the wisdom of the spiritual classic the imitation of Christ reminds us of the Lord's teaching that the kingdom of God is within you. And it states, learn to depart from external things. The state of affairs are sort of providing that for us. Learn to depart from external things to devote yourself to those that are within you. And you will see the kingdom of God come unto you, that kingdom which is peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. And the imitation of Christ says, His, God's, His visits with the interior man are frequent. His communion, sweet and full of consolation. His peace, great and his intimacy wonderful indeed. And so one prerequisite for this to transpire, this encounter, is to separate ourselves from external things. And so even though at times it may seem complicated or difficult to, to enter in to our interior room, perhaps it is not so much a problem with our ability to turn to God in quiet prayer or to meditate upon and delight in His Word, but perhaps the biggest obstacle we have is sin, that is, a disordered attachment to the things of this world. And so in order to see Him, we need a clean heart. And there's a beautiful text that speaks to this need that we read on Wednesday of the third week of Lent in the breviary. It is a passage from St. Theophilus of Antioch. He says the following, 
God is seen by those who have the capacity to see him, provided that they keep the eyes of their mind open. All have eyes, but some have eyes that are shrouded in darkness, unable to see the light of the sun. Because the blind cannot see it, it does not follow that the sun does not shine. The blind must trace the cause back to themselves and their eyes. In the same way, you have eyes in your mind that are shrouded in darkness because of your sins and evil deeds. A person's soul should be clean, like a mirror reflecting light. If there is rust on the mirror, his face cannot be seen in it. In the same way, he continues, no one who has sin within him can see God. But if you will, you can be healed. Hand yourself over to the doctor and he will open the eyes of your mind and heart. Who is to be the doctor? It is God who heals and gives life through his word and wisdom. And he concludes, if you understand this and live in purity and holiness and justice, you may see God. But before all, faith and the fear of God must take the first place in your heart, and then you will understand all this. So perhaps this is one among many of the lessons that is being offered to us now by God's providence, that we are being invited to, to be still and know that He is God, that He has called us to be His temples and to not forget it, and to go to Him there often in silence and in prayer. Therefore, according to Pope Benedict XVI, we must give priority to God and to our relationship with Him in prayer, both as individuals and as a community. If we do not have the capacity to pause and listen to the Lord, to enter into dialogue with Him, he says, and this is a good point in light of, of the, the difficulties of the day, we risk becoming ineffectually agitated by problems, difficulties, and needs. We might say that prayer is an indispensable element in the reduction of, of despair, of, of of disheartened days, in a word, in lack of faith. When we pray in the silence of our heart, in our room, we are united in the Lord to our brothers and sisters in faith. Therefore, let us turn to the Lord these days in a particular way, so that we may recover the sight that we were meant to have to see the true identity of God as Father, ourselves as His adopted sons, and one another as brothers and sisters. Moreover, it also invites us to look more deeply into our home lives, that we may continue to draw one another closer and closer to Him. Let us ask for this grace this week through the intercession of our Blessed Mother. Amen. Let us now profess our faith. I believe in one God, the, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. 
I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As the solemnity of Easter approaches, dear friends, let our prayer to the Lord be all the more insistent that all of us and the whole multitude of the baptized together with the entire world, may come to share more abundantly in this sacred mystery. That God may be pleased to increase faith and understanding in the catechumens who are to be initiated in holy baptism. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That peoples in need may find help and that peace and security may be firmly established everywhere let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who are afflicted or suffering temptation may be strengthened by his grace, especially those who are experiencing and undergoing difficulties with the current virus. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all of us may learn to distribute the fruits of self-denial for the good of those in need. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Have mercy, O Lord, on the prayers of your church, and turn with compassion to the hearts that bow before you, that those you make sharers in the divine mystery may never be left without your assistance, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. We place before you with joy these offerings which bring eternal remedy, O Lord. 
praying that we, mo we may both faithfully revere them and present them to you as is fitting for the salvation of all the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. By the mystery of the Incarnation, he has led the human race that walked in darkness into the radiance of the faith and has brought those born in slavery to ancient sin through the waters of regeneration to make them your adopted children. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration, and we with all the hosts of angels cry out and without end acclaim. Most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Oscar, our bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you, for them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, where they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord, Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damian, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, Graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In 
similar way when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord. We, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints, admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon, through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. The Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. 
trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil deliver us lord we pray from every evil graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I'm I not am not worthy, worthy that, that you should enter, enter under, under my roof, roof but only say, say the word, and, and my soul shall, shall be healed. healed. Let us pray. O God, who enlighten everyone who comes into this world, illuminate our hearts, we pray. 
with the splendor of your grace that we may always ponder what is worthy and pleasing to your majesty and love you in all sincerity through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. Look upon those who call to you, O Lord, and sustain the weak. Give life by your unfailing light to those who walk in the shadow of death and bring those rescued by your mercy from every evil to reach the highest good. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend, defend us in, in battle. battle. Be our safeguard against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Amen.